Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, we ask that you come and go with us to the Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. The third chapter. We're going to ask you to stand to show reverence to God's Word, please. I'm going to ask you to stand to show reverence to the reading of God's Word. Gospel according to St. John. That third chapter. I want to begin reading at that 16th verse. It's told that it was said that it's the most familiar verse in the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. The 16th verse, the third chapter of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You may be seated. That's enough. Amen. I'd like to speak to you from a thought today. And I, 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 I want to keep this personal because it's, it's all about me. Amen. I want to speak to you from a thought today. He did it all for me. He did it all for me. Amen. It's a good feeling to know that someone cares enough about you to do something that nobody else will do for you. And we all have people that will tell us that they love us. But sometimes I, I have to wonder just how much do they love us. I wonder sometimes just how far our love goes for one another. I often think about if we were ever put in a situation to prove just how much we care, would we pass the test? What are we willing to give? Or, or better yet, what are we willing to give up for the ones we're supposed to love? And like I said, I'm going to just talk about me now. I'm going to just talk about me. There, there are some situations in which I pray that I never have to be put into to prove my love for my family or the ones in which I say I love. Oh, I wish I had some real folk in here today. Because none of us can say what we'll do in this case or that case if we've never had to face it. Uh, are are y'all going to pray with me in here? Because love goes beyond what we say. And watch this. Love even goes beyond what we do. Love sometimes goes beyond how well we may know somebody. Amen. Love encompasses what we do and, and the attitude in which we do it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A amen. Because I don't need you to do something for me. And then you don't want to do it. That, that's, that's not love. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you, I don't want you to, to help me. And then you got to go out and talk about what you did for me. That, that's, that's, that's not love. Real love. I'm talking about real love, not this yeah, fake love stuff. Real love is 
is when I can willingly give up me for you and nobody has to know about it. Are y'all going to be with me? Amen, amen. In the words of this text, and in the words of this text, we, we see that Jesus is talking to a man by the name of Nicodemus about salvation. And Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews. The Bible said that he came to Jesus by night. We don't know why he came by night. That's the time he chose. He, he could have been busy during the day or he could have been hiding under the cover of night. It doesn't matter. He still came to Jesus. And that's why we can't criticize folk when they get saved. I don't care what reason they came as long as they get to Jesus. A -a Amen. He came to Jesus by night. He was talking to Jesus and said, Rabbi, teacher, we know that you are a teacher sent from God because no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And before he can get the last statement out of his mouth, Jesus said, you must be born again. Oh, yeah. oh, you must be born again. He was telling him, Nicodemus was confused when he was saying, you know, I'm, I'm an old man. How can I crawl in my mother's womb and be born again? Jesus, Jesus says, marvel not that I'm telling you this. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is of the spirit. A Amen. And then Jesus got down and talking with him, and he told him what God did for everybody. He said, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. God so loved us. The world. We, 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 we're the world. Whether you know Jesus or don't know Jesus, God loved us so much, he gave his only son. Uh, 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 y'all see that? That's why I can't talk to y'all. I got to talk to me. Amen. Because all y'all ain't with me. I got to talk to me. Amen. He gave me his only son. Uh, are y'all are y'all are y'all with me? In other words, God showed love to even those who did not love Him. Amen. Because the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. For us. A amen. And I'm glad today to know that before I loved him, he already loved me. Boy, I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. Paul says in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, he says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Amen. In other words, he loved me before I had a relationship with him or even, even before I even knew him. Amen, somebody. And he did some things for me that no one else could do. And now we're getting down to the crux of the message. This is why I praise him like I do. This is why I lose my mind and act so silly sometimes because I know what the Lord has done for me. Hey, 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 amen. And, 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 and if some of y'all can be a witness in it, it's all right to say amen. Amen. Hey, 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 amen. I, I know what he did for me. And there were six things, six things that the Bible said that Jesus done for me because he loved me so much. And see, and I have to take this personal. I just feel he did it all for me. I feel he did it all for me. A amen. Amen. The first thing, the first thing that he did, he came to earth. That, that, that's the first thing. That's one of the most important things. He came to earth. He gave up his seat in glory to come here, amen, as a man. John 1, 14 says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, he beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus loved me enough that he was willing to give up reverence for ridicule. He was willing to give up power for pain. He was willing to give up glory for for gloom. 
He was willing to give up immortality for mortality. He was willing to give up heaven for hell down here on earth. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Amen. And because when he left the Father, this is what he gave up to come here. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this or not, he did it all for me. So this is the first thing that he did. He came to earth. That's the first thing he did. Amen. The second thing he did, he lived to be an example. That's, that's the second thing he did. Jesus lived in a way that he wanted us to live. John 13, 15, Jesus says, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. There should be no question about what we should do as Christians on this earth. As Christians, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Savior, as your Lord, there should be no question about what we should do here. If you come to a dilemma and you wonder whether you go left or whether you go right, ask the question, what would Jesus do? A -a -a Amen. Jesus didn't want me to have to second guess anything when it came to what I should be doing. And that's why he showed me the way. He showed all of us the way. Even in how we should be thinking. That's why Paul says in Philippians 2 and 5, he said, let that mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. I should not only be doing what Jesus did, I should be thinking the way that Jesus thought. Hey, amen. And he did it all for me. A amen. He came, he lived, and the third thing he did, he offered himself as a sacrifice. In other words, he died. Amen. Jesus allowed himself to be treated as a criminal, even killed, because he loved me so much. He gave his life for me. Amen. Paul had written, he said, I don't know how many people will give their life for a righteous man. Uh, yeah. Scarcely would one die for a good man. But this man, <laughs> who had no sin, gave his life for a rock gut sinner like myself. Boy, I wish I had some witnesses I dare not. He gave his life for somebody like me. Amen. Hebrews 10 12 says, but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down at the right hand of God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he says, for he hath made himself to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, the, the, there, there was only one thing that could save me from going to hell, and that was the blood of Jesus. Boy, I wish I had somebody in here that knew about the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood washes, the blood covers, the blood heals, the blood seals. What could wash away all my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What could make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other thought I know. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. And guess what? That blood will never, never lose its power. Amen. And he did it all. He did it all for me. He came. He lived. He died. And the fourth thing, he didn't stop yet. The fourth thing, he rose from the dead. This is why we're here today. He got up out the grave. Acts 2.24 says, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. In other words, even though he died and went in the grave, the grave wasn't strong enough to hold. Death had to take his hands off of Jesus. 
Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 20, he said, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Because Jesus rose from the dead. He proved that death and the grave had no power over him. And it showed me that because he had this much power, I could believe whatever he told me to do. Can I get a witness in here? And that's why we should pray. That's why Jesus said that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. And he got up out of that grave with me on his mind. Isn't it good to know that Jesus got me on his mind? Jeremiah 29 and 11, God told the prophet, he said, I know my thoughts that I have for you, which lets me know that the Lord got me on his mind. And he did it all. He did every bit of it. He came. He lived. He died. He rose. And the fifth thing that he did, he went back to glory to sit at the right hand of God. Yeah. Romans 8 and 34 says, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Amen. I'm glad that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Anybody else in here glad that he's seated at the right hand of the Father? See, I don't know about you, but I got two reasons why I'm glad that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. The first reason I'm glad that he's at the right hand of the Father is because he makes intercession for me. Intercession, which means that he is my mediator. He is my go-between. Amen. When I pray, I don't know how to pray, but when I pray, I don't know how to pray like I ought to pray, but when I pray, his Holy Spirit down on the inside of me, who is bilingual, because he's understanding what I'm trying to say. And then he goes to Jesus and tell him what I meant. And when he has that talk with Jesus, then Jesus conveys it to the Father. And the Father gives Jesus the nod and tells him everything's going to be all right. And then Jesus tells the Holy Ghost that's inside of me, don't worry, everything is going to be all right. And it's all because he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He intercedes for me. And the second thing, I'm glad he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, is because he'll stand up for me. Oh, y'all never had to have Jesus stand up for you. Amen. Isaiah says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to fight my enemies. All I have to do is stand still. And when I stand still, that's when Jesus stands up. Hey, hey, man, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let me tell you how I know that Jesus stands up. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about a deacon by the name of Stephen who had told the Pharisees and scribes in the Sanhedrin council about Jesus and how they had crucified Jesus and how they had killed him. But Jesus has risen from the dead and they didn't like what Stephen was saying and they picked up stones to stone Stephen. And Stephen looked up toward heaven and heaven opened up and Stephen said, look, I see Jesus. He said, Jesus, there he is right there, standing up at the right hand of the Father. I'm so glad when the enemy comes against me that I got a Savior in heaven at the right hand of the Father that will stand when I can't stand. I'm glad that he went back and he did it all He came. He lived. 
He died. He rose. He went back. And the last thing, the sixth thing, he sent back. He sent back the Holy Ghost to keep me until he comes back for me. Boy, y'all don't know when to get happy. Amen. Jesus knew that I could not live on this earth by myself. Oh, boy. See, he knew wrath. He knew wrath. And if he leave wrath by himself, wrath wouldn't have been here this morning. I ain't the only one in here. Y'all stop acting like y'all so saying. If he would have left me by myself, Ralph wouldn't have been saved this morning. I told you, it's all about me. It's all about me. Amen. I probably would have been on the phone talking to some amen for what happened last night and all of this stuff. But because of who he sent back. Amen. John, Jesus says, in John 14 and 16, he said that I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 14, he said that good thing which, is com which was committed unto thee, he said keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. And he did it all. Brother Rick. He did it all for me. He came. He lived. He died. He rose. He went back. And he sent back. Y'all got it now. A -a Amen. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus has proven time and time again that his love Surpasses all understanding. And it's a sad thing when we don't realize just how much Jesus loves us. But I stopped by to tell you today that Jesus is worthy of all the praise. Boy, I wish I had a witness in here. Jesus has done so much for us. And yet we don't show him that we appreciate it like we should. But I don't know about you. The reason I made this personal is that I made up in my mind. That I'm going to show the Lord that I thank him for being so good to me. Is there anybody in here besides myself that the Lord has been good to? Can I get a witness in here? He woke you up this morning. Put clothes on your back. Let you be in your right mind this morning. Gave you a reasonable portion of health and strength. The Lord is good to us. I know that my Lord is good to us. Jesus went on living his life. After he talked to Nicodemus, he went on healing the sick, raising the dead, giving sight to blind eyes, making deaf ears to hear again, making lame legs get up and walk again. Those who were on the bed of affliction, the Lord laid his hands on and they rose up healed. And my Lord on right he took two little fish and five barley loaves and fed a large multitude. Ain't my Lord all right? And I heard early on a Friday morning, they took my Lord and my Savior, marched him up ball buckles here, put nails in his hands, put nails in his feet, and he did it all for me. They hung him high. And somewhere around the ninth hour, the Bible said he died. He died, y'all, from the sixth 
to the ninth hour. He died to the earth reeled and rocked. He died till dead saints got up and walked the streets of Jerusalem. And the young rise, they laid him in the grave. They did Friday night. They did Saturday night. But Sunday morning, on this Sunday morning, he got up with all power.